Running Sentences presents The Madhouse Job Part 1 A New Job A man, fresh off of a tragedy, looks to rebound in life and find a new life in a new job. This is a work of fiction. Any names, characters, places, businesses, and events are products of the author's imagination. Any resemblance to real people, living, dead, or real corporations, businesses, and events is of pure coincidence. Copyright 2021. Michael Honoré. All rights reserved. The hiring office was nice looking, though it also had a feeling of oldness to it. A feeling that seemed to just stick to him. Or maybe it was just the smell of slight mothballs in the air about the place. And the hiring manager, sitting across from Jasper Hughes, was a young man who seemed well put together, and not one who would like the smell of mothballs or letting them stick around. How this young hiring manager was ignoring the slight smell that kept coming and coming, and sitting there, never fully there, but never going away either, was beyond Jasper. The whole thing left Jasper slightly unsure of himself, in the whole getting a job here kind of way. Well, Mr. Hughes, I have a few more questions for you. Why is it you want a job as a cleaner for a hospital? Ah, well, my life hasn't been going well, and I wanted a fresh start, though, doing something new, something different. I could help people with little things, the background things that people don't think about until they have to. I just, I want somewhere where I can throw my mind into my work and, and, you know, and and be sort of forgotten but useful. And, oh, yes, that sounds very... Well, very, very something, and um, please forgiving me if this is intruding too much, but why do you want to throw yourself into a job? You have a pretty good education from what your resume says, and for such a lowly position as this. I, um, my parents, it's, uh, it's complicated with how things have played out for me, and I, I just, you know, new things, new life, new... New. I see. Well, that's all I need to know for now. I I apologize for prying, but we do have to ask questions here. I am a hiring manager, and we must ask those questions. We shall let you know in a day or two of what is going to happen, or if we're going forward with your candidacy. Uh, Thank you. The hiring manager stood up and offered his hand. This surprised Jasper, who jumped up at the sudden end of the interview and took his hand and shook it. Then he was led out of the office. After he got out, he finally managed to find his way through the maze of a hospital. The clean air was supposed to be a welcome respite, but it too had a heavy feeling to it which made it feel weird. A dampness and a fog that laid over the grounds also created a mysterious look that it just made the whole place seem off. Still, He did his best to ignore this as he headed down the main stairs of the main entrance towards the parking lot where his car was. And he successfully made it to the sidewalk before he decided he needed to look back over his shoulder. He glanced back at the place, a foreboding metal sign announcing that Jacob's Asylum for the Mental was the place where he'd just come from. The metal sign was firmly attached to the front entrance of the place and looked like it would never, ever move. What was bothering him, though, was the feeling that there was someone watching him who did not want him to leave. But he didn't care about that. He didn't want to think about it. He could feel it, but he just didn't want to think about it. And he would best just move on since this was a mental hospital and, of course, there would be patients who did staring from windows. They were odd people, were they not? Now, his main problem was that if he didn't get the job, he didn't know what he was going to do with himself. Hughes pinched himself on the leg to get his mind to stop staring at the place and then headed for his car. A month had gone by and left Jasper wandering about his apartment, 
lost in thought and worry. He'd been hoping and praying that the job was to happen, and hadn't thought of a backup plan, or much of anything. His money, while thin, wouldn't run out, but still his plan. A trill ring from his phone sent him sprinting from one side of his apartment living room to the other, a distance of a few short feet and an unnecessary dive to grab the phone for the sake of hope and hurrying things along. Hello? Oh, Mr. Hughes, glad I caught you. My apologies for getting back to you so late about the job offer. We had a patient disappear into the night and had to drop everything to search for them. Uh, thankfully, that's now all over. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, though. Eh, well, it's fine now. By the way, if you were to take that job, you would be required to drop everything at any point in time and come help search, should something happen to a patient. Are you okay with that? Well, yes, yes, I think I can do that. Good, glad to hear it. Then consider this an official invitation to join our great hospital. I'll, I'll take it. I'll, I'll start on Monday or, or whenever you need. Even more excellent. We need someone for the night shift. Please arrive a day early so that we can situate you nicely. That is all. And with that, the phone conversation was over and done with. Hughes gently hung up the phone and then, relieved that his plan was still in motion, lay back with a sigh of satisfaction. Sunday came about abruptly, and Jasper had packed up his car and driven to the ferry, which he was now aboard. The boat was making slow progress, cutting its way through the morning fog that had laid itself thickly across the massive lake. Somewhere in there, though it wasn't visible, was the hospital on a big island that had its own network of roads to help people get around. The cold morning drove Jasper back to his car as the sun wasn't bothering to come out and the fog was just sitting there, unwilling to move away. An hour or so into the journey, the ferry finally bumped its way softly into the landing dock. The fog hadn't lifted yet, and so when the plank was lowered to let his car off, Jasper found himself driving into it. His was the lone car heading to the island. It bumped its way across the graded plankway onto the road. There was no one there to greet him, so Jasper started driving down the road, carefully. Even though he was should be fairly aware that there would be few cars about the place. There was still the problem of the unfamiliar roads in front of him, and crashing his car was not high on his list of priorities. The road to the hospital took its winding way across the island, and up near the former mine, and then down to a small little town that had been built up to support the mine. It was all long abandoned, though the town still had a few buildings running. He could see this because there were still businesses running as he drove through, although he stepped a bit more on the gas so that he could get through this area and on to the hospital on the other side of the island. He arrived a while later at the gate to the hospital and found an imposing graded structure with a guard shack sitting in the way. He pulled up to the shack and stopped as he rolled down his window, and a guard popped out from the shack. Can I help you? I am uh, Jasper Hughes. I was hired by the hospital, and I was told to come in today, the day before I started uh, to get settled in. Oh, are you the new guy? Best of luck to you in this place that requires a bit of it and to get around and all of that. What will you be doing? I'm one of the cleaners, sir. Huh. A fancy car and working as a cleaner. Interesting combination. Anyway, I just need your license and I can call up and see if they're expecting you. Jasper hurriedly got out his wallet and produced his driver's license and handed it over. The guard looked it over for a second before disappearing back into his shack. This allowed Jasper to settle into his seat with the hopes that everything was okay and the that he hadn't messed up somehow already, and in some way. He could see the guard on the phone talking to someone. It was a short conversation, just as quickly as he'd started, it ended, and the gate began to open. The guard came back out and handed back the ID. Head down the driveway, and when you reach the fork in the road, take the right fork. Also, because it is so foggy out there, please drive slowly. Patients might be out and about. 
as much as we try and keep them safe and sound. Jasper waved in his hand as he got the car moving and headed over the slight speed bump and onto the grounds themselves. He found himself driving carefully, sure enough, along the driveway. The fog felt heavy and clouded over much of the road, but he found the fork and took the right side, driving blindly towards what he was hoping was the right place. He soon found himself arriving at a parking lot and dutifully parked his car. Here, the fog wasn't thick and he could start seeing that it was lifting as he saw in front of him an overgrown building invaded by ivy or maybe there were creeping vines that had taken over much of the facade. What he could see of the place looked to be old, Victorian, and slightly ominous. There was also a sprightly gentleman standing by the door, staring at him with his head cocked to the side. It wasn't a glare or anything, just a curious look at him as he got out of his car. Um, excuse me, is this the spot for new employees? Yes, it is. You're Jasper Hughes, correct? Good. Follow me inside. You can leave your stuff in the car for now. The man turned abruptly and headed inside the building while Jasper stood there, confused. What was going on? And who was this man? It just now, uh, well, the man's deep voice sounded as if it had come from somewhere else, and certainly not the man's body. Jasper could only shake his head and hurried up towards the step after all of this weirdness. This place was certainly not going to be normal, and he was slightly thankful for that. And, of course, the feeling that this was an odd place was certainly confirmed for him. The gloomy interior of the building did nothing to hide the pent-up feeling of a Victorian era that was trying too hard to be Victorian. Jasper decided it was more of a modern take, trying to look and feel that way, and thus the fancy wood paneled walls that circled the entrance, then split off to the sides. It was all nice, but very odd. He stepped from the entranceway deeper into the building, following where the man who'd just gone straight on. There were rooms to the right and left of him, but their doors were all closed, and this just added to the darkness of the place, where the only light seemed to be coming from overhead chandeliers. All there was left to do was go up the staircase in front of him, where the man was already headed up. Jasper wondered if the rest of the hospital looked like this building or the other building that he'd been in so far and this over-ornate, extenuated style. Please follow me to the stairs, Mr. Hughes. We have much to see and I don't want you to get lost. It's very easy to get lost. Heeding his warning, Jasper hurried his way up the mountain carpeted steps two by two to catch up. When they'd arrived at the second floor, he was greeted by a hallway headed to either side of him, and offices lining both sides. The man that he was following headed off to the right, and Jasper found himself following this odd man, who came to a stop down the hallway in front of a door. This over here is the cleaning office space. You need to report here every day for work. In we go! The man entered the office with a click of the door handle, which echoed down the eerily quiet office hallway. Jasper, who had been right behind him, sort of just followed him in, not sure what else he could do, eager to get started and find out about his new job. There was little to the actual office, aside from a desk and a few filing cabinets. A prominent little placard announced that this was the office of Mr. Reginald Dubois the Fourth, Jr. The man who brought him in, moved around to sit behind the desk, and then pointed towards a woman who was in one of the two chairs across from the desk. This is your co-worker, Elise Vaught. She shall show you around the facility. Once that's done, please come back here, okay? Elise nodded and stood up and headed for the door. Jasper felt all tied up and confused as to why he'd been brought here only to be shown to another person who was then going to take him around. Wouldn't it have been easier to have this woman meet him in the parking lot? She had come to a stop next to him and stared. Oh, um, uh, is something wrong? No, but we have much to see as the hospital is big and spread over many, many, many buildings. So, if you don't mind... There will be no standing around. 
She turned curtly and headed out of the office. Jasper felt his head starting to swim as he swung about to head back out the way he'd come. This was turning into a very odd place that was making no sense whatsoever. This was just a cleaning job, and what was all this fuss about? Once outside of the office again, Elisa spun on him and carefully examined him once again. Jasper threw up his hands to surrender in case anything should happen, but she seemed uninterested in fighting, and was more interested in studying him. Without a word, she turned and gave him a tour of the office building, which held many of the head offices for the most of the department, except for the nurses and doctors. It was a whirlwind tour through the building, and then across a small skyway to another building. Here in this second building, Elisa came to a stop as they arrived at the ringed balcony over a surgery theater. The place was empty and looked clean, but the feeling that it was unused permeated the place as it was just a bit too clean. This is our surgery facility building. Should any surgery be needed by patient or staff, we can accomplish it without having to call for a fast boot from the mainland. Um, well that's good, um, but it doesn't look like it's been needed very often. The big operation rooms, no. We have lots of small rooms that are used more for little things. But still, we don't do much work there either. And we have these big rooms, because they used to be the lobotomizing rooms. But the head of the hospital doesn't subscribe to theories about lobotomizing patients anymore to cure them of mental issues. The tour continued through three other big theaters like the first one and a variety of small offices, plus a few doctors and nurses here and there. They wound up down into the cellar of this second building where there was an open-air tram car sat along a track that went down a tunnel. Jasper found himself staring down the poorly lit space, trying to see what was beyond, but could only make out the flickering lights hanging above. Elisa, who had gotten into the tram car and into the driver's seat, motioned for him to join her. These tunnels connect all of the buildings, of which there are 15 total. Get in, we have much to see, and I need to show you where you'll be stationed for the most part. Jasper clambered aboard the thin metal tram car. The seat was made of a wicker, which seemed to just be holding together as the car took a second and then shot off down the tracks with Elisa hitting the gas. The ride through the tunnel, with its blinking, flashing lights speedily passing along, was a bit mesmerizing to Jasper. He was sitting there, wondering if this was all some form of hypnotism when the tram slowed down and he looked over at Alita, who he could see shaking her head. Sorry, I tend to get a bit fast trying to get through these tunnels. I forget about the lights and how it causes problems for some people. Oh, yes, I was wondering why we were going so quickly along the tracks. Um, that don't mind me, though. Uh, those lights are just weird. You know, I, they don't bother me that much. Oh, good. The tram, though, continued to slow down even further, and was soon bathed in a light as it pulled into the next building's basement. They came to a stop in the basement, which was filled with people moving stuff from a tram in front of them and transporting them to a nearby elevator. Jasper watched as he got out of the tram car and then looked about for Elisa, who was at his side. These are some of our patients. The head doctor believes that work helps centralize their minds, or something to that effect. It's busy work. Oh, I, I see, and uh, this building is... Holding center. Every patient that comes in for treatment first goes here to see what the issues are. Then we send them on to another building for another stay. We weed out what needs to be done to these people at each stop and get them better care. It all makes very good sense. You, likewise, will start here at this building to work. Oh, I, I see. So uh, this is where my tour will stop them? For now, we, we will explore this building, and maybe a little bit later, in a couple of weeks, you will explore a bit more. For now, so we can see how you do, and so on, like the patients. And we can help centralize where you might be best suited. But after that, we'll probably show you some more buildings, and you know. But first, let's just concentrate on this one. She moved towards a doorway off to the right with loads of boxes that were being stacked where they could fit onto the elevator because they were headed upstairs. 
Jasper dodged around a few people to catch up. Um, so what are they moving? Medical supplies. Nothing that would allow them to cut themselves or anything like that. But bed liners, masks, gloves. But not medical medical. But not medicine. Sometimes it is food for the cafeteria or trash that needs to be taken away. All of our patients do sort of these sorts of things around here. She opened the doorway and was bounding her way up some stairs with Jasper, just trying to keep up with her quick pace. They'd gone up to the second floor of the building, past the first floor without stopping, and here Jasper found himself wandering down a hallway that was lined off with locked rooms. A few patients were inside of these rooms, and a few doors were opened, and he could peek in, but all he could make out were a bed and a toilet in there. Elisa was moving quickly, not bothering to point out the patient's room or anything like that, but rather the cleaning closets that were about the place. These closets are unlocked and will always be available to anybody. We don't store anything stronger than soap, and even that isn't that strong. If you need something heavy to clean up messes, there is a storage area that's locked up on the first floor. You can only get into that with a special key, and you'll need one of your superiors to open it up. We do that for everyone's safety and to make sure that we trust them. Uh, so for even the smallest of messes, I'll probably need to see someone superior? No, 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 no. Only heavy messes will need a superior. The soap you have does wonders for most things. Come along now, I'll show you to the quarters. Elisa and her, her brisk walking pace continued on as quickly as she could with Jasper following. They wound up back in the basement and on the tram, soon rushing off to some other building. As the tram once again slowed to a stop in the basement of another building, this one had a stack of parked tram cars and no one about it. Jasper found himself clambering out, lost in thought as he and Elisa headed towards a set of rickety-looking stairs. Um, uh, those stairs? Yes, those are pretty bad, and the, our woodworker broke his arms in a fall a couple of weeks ago. Hasn't fully healed, and we have no one to repair it yet. Do you know your way around a hammer, by the way? Yes, but not that I would trust my ability to build something that will stay up with, though. Well... The uh, workers, the cleaner workers, will probably all pitch in, and we'll get these stairs figured out. Shouldn't be too hard, I believe. It is mostly replacing a few steps and support beams. We'll get to it. Shaking his head, Jasper headed up the flight of stairs carefully, feeling his weight under each wooden step to make sure that it would hold. They didn't feel like they wanted to give. Then again, they also didn't feel like they were about to hold, either. They made their way up to the third floor and Elisa had brought him to the very end of the hallway, to a small room. It contained a small bedroom and a kitchen facility, plus a bathroom off to the side. Jasper wandered about the place, looking at it, and then back at Elisa, who had taken up a seat in the kitchen area. We asked that all employees stay at the hospital while working. You'll have days off and can head into town, and you don't have to actually stay here on those days. But it is strongly recommended that you do. She had risen from her chair and glanced about the place. Are you okay settling into this room? Your bags and luggage will be delivered shortly. I, I guess so. I, I, I took the job and whatever comes with it. I, I guess I can deal with that. Good. I'll leave you to that and to find your way around the building. But be back in your room at 5 p.m. I'll pick you up and show you to our dining area. She walked over to him, took his hand gently into hers, and then leaned over and kissed it. Then, without saying anything further, she left. Jasper was still holding his hand in the air, trying to figure out what had just happened, and he could only look at his hand for a second, and then at the door which Elisa had gone out of, and the thought that this was a very weird place going through his mind. A bit of exploration around the room had led him to discover that this room had a small balcony hidden behind a full-length curtain and a door. He grabbed a chair and sat out in there, enjoying the eerie fog that laid over the wooded area that he could see. Beyond that, he could only hear a few gulls crying out in the midst of fog. He pushed aside the curtain and left the door open for when the delivery people came by, which they shortly did and dropped off his stuff. How they'd gotten into his car, he didn't want to think about, and hoped that at least they'd been kind enough to lock the doors. 
Time went by, and he took in the rest of the day relaxing out there. That is, until a knock on the door to his little abode was heard promptly at five, and took him out of this relaxed state. He brought his chair back in and quickly hid the balcony, before heading over to the door to open it and see that Elise was waiting for him. He stepped out and looked over at Elise, who was dressed much like she had been this morning. They weren't scrubs, but simple clothes that could get dirty, and it wouldn't look bad. She returned his glance with curiosity in her eyes. Did you get some exploring in? No, I, I stayed here trying to get comfortable, and I discovered that I have a balcony. Oh, you're one of the lucky ones, then, if you got that. Congrats. Shall I show you around some more after dinner, then? Um, well, if it isn't too much of a bother to you. Good, let's head over to the dining room, then. She once again took the lead, marching down the hallway with Jasper finding himself in tow, trying to keep up. Soon, back in the tunnels, they were being whisked along in the tram cars, joining a line of them headed towards another building. At least this time was at least moderate with the speed at which they were traveling, since there were other tram cars on the line. It wound up taking them a few minutes to arrive at their destination, which Elise had warned him about when they'd gotten in. The basement was but a fleeting sight as Elise rushed him upstairs and into a dining room. The place was plain and unremarkable. It looked like a cafeteria with rows of bench seats and a line for food. Jasper watched as the crowd of patients went in one line and a group of workers found their way into another line. Um, so Elise, we eat with these patients. Yes, it's to help give them a feeling of a normal life, we believe, or so our head doctor says. At least for those that we feel we can trust somewhat. Once again, they have to build their way up to this. Um, and there are a few out there that, you know, they just... They have special requirements, and we like to keep an eye on them, especially. Like those that like to eat that with their hands and so on. It's all a bit odd. We all try and do our bit to take care of these people especially. He found himself moving towards the line of workers to get in line to get some food, his stomach rumbling with Elise right behind him. Jasper soon found himself looking about the place just to see who was who. Is this the big doctor here, or the, the head doctor, as you called him, or... Out of town, I believe. An important visit to a patient we're trying to get into the hospital, or so the rumors go. Oh, well, do we eat with the patients, or can we eat anywhere? Most of the workers eat with workers. But if a patient comes up the, to a free seat, it is, in fact, a free seat. When they got into the kitchen service area, food was slopped onto a tray and then pushed to another cook, who slopped some more of this substance onto the tray and then handed it over. Jasper soon found himself with a tray, looking and trying to decipher what was on it, while moving quickly to get out of the kitchen so that he wasn't in the way. After exiting the kitchen with this sloppy mess on his try, Jasper found himself being directed towards an empty table, which they were soon seated at. The bench of seats attached to the table made for an uncomfortable seat that was just there and that would be sat on for the necessary amount of time, but you wouldn't want to spend any more time on it than you had to. He wiggled in his seat to get comfortable as Elisa sat down next to him. Uh, forgive me for saying this, um, but this hospital is very... Off or odd, I think. What? Do you mean that we don't do the lobotomy procedures or the humane treatment of our guests who stay here? No, no, not that. The way things are, it feels off to me. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, well, I, I, I'm sorry I brought it up. Um, is there anyone in, in this crowd of people that I should know about or watch out for or, you know... Somebody who's dangerous or something like that? Elisa pointed out a man over the side. The big man over there, that looks a bit like a walking tray. He is the head of security. You can guess why he got his job. Do your best to avoid him unless you really need help. As for the others, well, there isn't anyone big to worry about. Most of these patients don't do much but wander about and complain to one another. Jasper, however, was only half looking and paying attention as he pushed the mush about on his tray. Elisa looked over at him and saw that he wasn't paying much attention to what she said, and shrugged, dipping into her own food so that she could eat. 
Eventually, Jasper joined in, and they ate in silence, with him occasionally looking up and studying people before returning to his food. After they finished dinner, Elisa had brought him back to the housing barracks, as she called it, and showed him about the place. There was a relaxation area, a small vending area, and a library which seemed to double as a gaming area for chess and cards. It had been a quick and dirty tour as they soon wound up back at Jasper's room. She looked a little annoyed and he was lost in thoughts, failing to notice that her mood had grown short. They came to a stop in front of his door and he put his hand on the doorknob to go in, but she grabbed it as he opened it. What is wrong with you? Huh? What? Hey, uh, um... Out with it. I can't have a cleaner lost in thoughts. Otherwise, patience will jump you. Oh, well, I, 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 I just got lost in the th- swamp of my thoughts, and I'm trying to get settled in. Um, it's all been so much that I, I can't think straight, and that supper, and that, that supper is, uh, it was, it was something. He pushed the door open and headed in. As he turned to try and close the door, he found that Elisa stood in the way and was moving past him before he could really react. Stunned by this, he slowly closed the door and then turned. He found that she was sitting on his bed. Elisa had found a photo from one of his boxes and had taken it and was looking it over. She turned it over to face him. Who is this? My former fiancé. And why is she former? That is none of your business. Then she's why you're here, right? Running away from a former life. It's happened to plenty of people. Most, however, don't go to work at mental hospitals to try and cover from the past. So, why are you here? It was far enough away from where all of my life happened, and I felt like I could be of help to people. You look like a lost kitten, unsure of himself, and trying to plot its escape. Feeding me lies about things will not help. It is the truth, though. No, it is not. She got up from the bed and looked him over, and she headed towards the door and handed him his photo back. Mr. Hughes, you will not escape here, but you will find some comfort and help from the right people. Good night. Jasper watched her walk out and slam the door shut behind her. The feeling of a headache was coming on. Had he already been discovered? Or was it that obvious that there was something off about him? He could only shake his head as he uncovered the door to the balcony and stepped out to get some fresh air. The cool night air hit him with quite a force and he found himself shivering in surprise. The quiet chirp of bugs echoing about the place and there was a breeze coming off from the distance. He could only guess it was because of the lake as he couldn't see the lake from himself since it was so dark. No, despite the fog lifting, he could barely make out the island itself, or how big it was in all of this darkness. The only thing he could make out was that there were a few lights from nearby buildings, which he hazarded a guess were those from the hospital. Another heavy gust of breeze drove him back inside. Once back inside, he looked about the sparse room that was populated with boxes and a bed that had been slightly made, but not really made, and there was also the kitchen area. The whole site drained the energy from him and barely managed to fix the sheet on his bed before falling onto it and fast asleep. His eyes opened and he stared at his old home and blinked. He shouldn't be here, and yet here he was. The last thing he remembered was falling asleep. The feeling of seeing a sight that he'd seen already crept on him as he studied the dark, quiet, colonial-style house that had seen much better days. Not that it was in disrepair, no. It had been loved, and it was sloppily kept together by a family that was always on the move. He stared at the sight that was felt familiar to him, but all in the wrong way. His eyes focused for anything that looked off, and he soon found a window that was red. A sinking feeling came to his stomach as he ran up the walkway to the front door, which was wide open. The second he went through the door, though, a scratch, scratch sounds caused him to spin about. He tried to locate it, but the noise persisted all around, and he tried to cover his ears. With a start, he awoke in the cold sweat in his room that had been assigned to him at the mental hospital. 
The dark dreariness and the single lamp which he'd forgotten to turn off when he went to sleep were his only company. With a sigh, Jasper tried to relax. It was only a nightmare, although a terrible no-good nightmare about his past. He got up from the bed trying to wipe away the sweat and plodding towards the bathroom, but stopped. The sound of scratching was definitely coming from the walls, but was it? Whatever it was, it didn't last long, and, well, maybe it was just a mouse or something, or maybe it was his imagination, couldn't really tell. Still, it was odd, and it stuck in his mind as he went into the bathroom. His shaking hands found the knobs to the faucet in the bleak light of the bathroom. The water splashed from the faucet onto his hands and then down onto the basin. As he cupped his hands and gently used it to splash himself with water, once cooled down, he glanced at the image of the mirror, seeing a tired-looking reflection of himself dripping with water and just looking hazardous. It was not a sight he was happy with, and he moved to leave. He came out of the bathroom, looking for a towel among his boxes of stuff, eventually finding one in his suitcase after a minute of search. As he was wiping his face down and once again heading for his bed, that he flopped onto this time, but didn't go straight to sleep. He listened for any sound or anything that might resemble a scratching noise, but nothing came and he soon found himself falling asleep. Having woken up late because his shift was to be the late one, Jasper wandered a bit around the quarters that quartered the staff, finding himself in a relaxation room all alone with a pool table to keep himself company. A few faces showed up occasionally from the staff, but no one stuck around as he played the afternoon away. His boredom dictated that he could only take so much of this before giving up on the idea of knocking balls around a table. As he set everything away, though, a man, who'd been seated in the corner, looked up. Are you done already? Hmm? Oh, sorry, I didn't even notice you were there. Uh, was I disturbing you? Oh, no. I found that extra noise to be a nice white noise to this book. It keeps the mind from getting too heavily into medical surgery books. Are you a, a doctor? That I am, though I am rarely called on, as I work nights and it's, I do surgery. Man, still, need to have someone around just in case. The name is George Bunder. The man got up from his chair, neatly tucking his book under his arm as he approached and offered his hand. His thin frame and figure seemed ghoulish in behavior, but also like a human who was just terribly thin. And you are, sir? Uh, sorry, I'm Jasper Hughes. I'm a new cleaner here. I work... And the night shift as well. Oh, good. I'll see you around then. Well, good luck with your work. I heard that the first thing the night shift is doing today is fixing the staircase downstairs. It is much needed. And with that, the man breezed out of the room, having left Jasper's hand half shaken. He looked about, trying to figure out why the man had just done what he'd done, but no hard answers came. And since there was nothing holding him in the room, he too left. As he headed back to his room, Jasper found himself in a rather busy hallway as people were getting ready for their shifts. There are those that could return early and get changed back into their regular stuff, uh, regular clothes. He'd made his way back to his room when he spotted a woman by his door. The hair, a crisp orange, that had either been dyed that way or she had a truly unique color of hair. He approached and then coughed politely. Oh, Mr. Hughes, I was looking for you. I'm sorry, I was I was away from my room. I took my time to explore a little. Uh, and who are you? Vera Langsong. I'm also one of the maintenance and cleaner workers here. I don't exactly work the same shift as you, but ours have uh, run over. Are you ready for work? It's only the late afternoon, though. Yes, well, I'm getting started, and Elise told me that I should come and take you to dinner in the private dinner lounge so that you didn't feel so off. Come along. She straightened up, leaning against the doorframe of his door, and hurried past him. They'd gone down two levels, and then into a closet of all spaces. Though it wasn't a small one, it did have supplies, and they were sticking all over the place. Jasper found himself dodging his way around these things, as he followed Vera to the back, where she knocked on the wall. Don't worry. This isn't as odd as it looks. We just have extra space away from the patients. As she said this, a door popped open where she had knocked, and light spilled into the semi-lit closet. The two stepped through, with Jasper all the more confused as to what was going on. 
The room beyond the closet was a nicely adorned one, with fancy tables and chairs, and tablecloths adorning said tables. It was very, very fancy, but Vera did not lead him to a table, but towards another door. We have to go in and order and then take the food out. It's complicated, but it's just in case a patient gets in here and wonders what all this is. This is a lot of work for a secret. It is the little things for the workers. Sometimes we need to get away from the patients, but you can't leave the campus. Here is our opportunity to do so. She opened the door and stepped through, the smell of various cooked goods coming pouring out. Jasper felt his stomach grumble and, unable to resist, hurried his way in, the door shutting behind him. Inside was a kitchen with a few cooking stations and a few people hanging around waiting for food. It was a busy and messy place that smelled glorious. Vera pointed over towards a board that hung on the wall by the door. The menu for today. Looks like a special of steamed burger. That's an odd one. I've never heard of that before. Oh, well, I've heard of it, but it's a regional thing. Oh, look at that. We have a well-traveled maintenance worker. At least a person who knows a few things, maybe. As for getting such food, head to one of the cooks and ask once it's your turn. And so he decided, that, yes, it was a very good idea to get some food, and found himself in another line in front of a cook. And eventually, after a while, he was handed over a plate that was topped with fries and an odd cheeseburger that had been steamed. As he headed towards the exit door, he noticed that it had a light above it, and at that moment it was green. But then a person stepped out, and once the door closed, it turned red for a second, and then back to green. He headed over towards the door as another person stepped through, and then the door shut behind them. It turned red again, and then and he reached out for the doorknob, which would not turn. And then, once it finally turned green again, he found he could leave. Once back out in the dining area, Jasper quickly found a table and settled in as Vera came to join him. The two were quiet at the start, enjoying the food in relative peace. Despite that, Jasper found himself wanting to talk, but about what he did not know. Just something to distract himself from the impending work that he'd have to do. So, Mr. Jasper, is the burger good, or just different? Um, uh, different but good? It's uh, much juicier, but that sounds wrong to say, maybe? Ah, but I understand. He fell silent once again, trying to think up of something to say, but at a loss for words, he just felt uncomfortable. Did you have a good night's sleep in your quarters? I know the first nights here can be quite a challenge. Um, yes and no, um, Miss Vera. Actually, um, does this place have a mouse or a rat problem? I swore I heard scratching noises coming from the wall. Vera looked at him through narrowed eyes as if she didn't believe him, and then shook her head. No, it does not. They once again fell into silence and eventually finished their meal. A staff member came by collecting plates, and they were soon gone. With nothing left to do, Vera guided him out to the hidden dining room. After dinner, she'd taken him to another closet, where she rustled up a set of overalls and told him to put him on for work, then left him in the cleaning closet to get changed. The overalls were baggy and did not fit right, but they also said that they'd get him his own as soon as they could. He could only shrug it on and head it out of the cleaning closet. And true to what George Bunder had told him that afternoon, they had gotten as far as the basement before they came to a stop at the basement stairs. There were already a few other maintenance people working away at the stairs as they came down them, with Elisa directing all of the workers. Jasper found himself pitching in, holding things up to stabilize the wood legs that held everything up with braces. It was tiring work to hold these things up, even with all of the help that they had, and his shift had only just begun. He was really not looking forward to any other extraneous work he had to do, but this job was soon done, and he soon found himself on a tram headed back towards a building with all of the first patients in it. The tram arrived at the patient's quarter and came to a slow stop, Jasper jumping off before it had even come to a full stop, with Vera soon joining him as they headed for the stairs. They were stopped, however, as a group busily came down the stairs, 
taking up the whole space of the staircase. They found themselves pushed aside by this group of guards who surrounded three men. Jasper watched them carefully, trying not to stare, but felt like he should stare. There was something definitely weird about this group. And they were soon passed and headed towards one of the tram cars. That is the boss, the head doctor of the place. I don't know who he was with, though. I have an idea that it's a patient. You do? Huh? Oh, I, I read about a case in a newspaper a week ago about some rich guy wanting to commit himself to an institute. I, I just figured that's who it was. He turned and bounded up the stairs as Vera cocked her head to the side and stared at him. End of part one. Thank you for listening.